What is that transition? Oh, it's just some chickens, bro. Just some chickens, man. It's my, uh, it's the channel mascot. It's Colonel. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh... Sorry, give me a sec. Just tween out and junk. Tween out and junk, brother. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Sorry, I just found out Bakken has, still has a Twitter account. I had no idea. That's kind of life changing, I think. <laughs> What's up? All right, we got the tweets out. I'm so sick seeing these pop-ups. I stopped resetting my ranks after um, after I found out they were reset, they were sunsetting uh, everything. So like, I just I don't need ascendant mats anymore. So I don't fucking fuck with those, and I don't need legendary shards. So I just stopped resetting my rank, and, and now every time I log on, I have twenty of those. What's up, uh, Lab? How you doing? Imagine a rocket launcher with lasting impression plus bait and switch. I well, no, I actually don't think that would be that good. Uh, I'm I'm I I used to be pretty hard on the uh, lasting impression train. I'm now off the lasting impression train. I just think it's with with different variable. It's good for some stuff, but like with different variables all over the place. Um, I and plus like dude, Palimbra or Palmyra has been completely outclassed, anyways. But back in the day when it, the argument was explosive light versus lasting impressions, I was on the lasting impressions train for a little bit. Um, but it's just like it's been outclassed, and I just I I just want like pure DPS dumpage. You know what I mean? So. Uh, can you briefly explain how to get uh, you got get the light lotus emblem? Yeah, uh, so Bungie does bungee bounty bounty blah, 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 blah. Bungie does bungee bounties. So a content creator will go into Crucible. If you beat them, you get the emblem. It's that. So I was it last week, two weeks ago. What well, time is the myth? I don't know. I was it this month. They're gonna try to do one um, every month from now on. So you just have to whoever the next creator team is, you just have to beat them and then you get it. You have to match them and then beat them. Um, dude, I'm doing well. How's how how the fuck is everybody doing, man? Are we all excited for these weapons? I gotta say, there's some juicers in here. I'm pretty pretty excited myself, and they all automatically get plus plus ten goodness rolls because of the fucking. Come on, you know what I mean? Like this limited time ornament alone makes them better they could be objectively worse say this forbearance could be objectively worse than the forbearance i have in the game doesn't matter because it's got that juicer ornament on it that makes it better i don't make the rules man i'm really not excited to grind the the last shiny weapon in two weeks i really hope it, it's a shit one i will say so we'll talk about the delays and stuff and i've i've actually um I've talked about it a little bit on Twitter, and I had a couple friends reach out and, and kind of explain their perspectives. Not Bungie friends, uh, regular people friends. Explain their perspectives a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm still not a fan, but I think there could be alternative Bungie motives other than player retention. So we'll talk about that. Um, uh, but I wish they would have given us a, a map of like, hey, this gun comes out here and, and there and then. Uh, because... I, look, if we're only gonna have two weeks to grind a fucking shiny version, I hope it's like a shit one. You know, make it fall in guillotine or like fucking recluse or 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 actually just please for the love of God make a hung jury. They did say what the original six were gonna be, didn't they? Uh so starting April 9th, they have recluse hung jury. Fuck off. Succession? Fuck off! Edge Transit, Elsie's Rifle, and Fallen Guillotine. Oh, God. Oh, God. That means all the good ones are left. Literally all the good ones are left. Mountaintop. 
Uh, hammerhead. Oh, fuck, man. Ah! <laughs> uh, ah! Uh, you know what I mean? Ah! Uh, yeah, it's gonna be fucking- it's gonna be mountaintop. You're gonna have two fucking weeks to farm out a god roll shiny mountaintop, and I'm gonna hate my wife for those two weeks. God fucking damn it. How'd you narrow it down to those four? There should be six. Mm. Or Lunas. There you go. Sorry, I miscounted. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those six. We'll see, man. I think it's pretty interesting uh, that such good weapons are coming out somewhat near to the final shape. It seems usually the weapons that you're grinding for to take into day one come out way before the raid. Um. Mm, mm. I actually don't know if I agree with that assessment. I feel like with the DLCs, we almost always get a juicer raid weapon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't agree with that. I mean, like, the reality is, is that we have 500 fucking guns and then the DLC brings like six. So it's more than likely that you're going to get, your best stuff's going to be before. But, um, um, like, I, I think the one I can immediately think of is right before Val, we got the, the Void Linear that everyone loves. Um, I type in or whatever. I never use that shit. Um, but, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I think that was right before. Was that right before that one? I don't know, man. My time, my, if, if you guys don't know this already, you should know my destiny timeline in my head is like, uh, it's a blob. Everyone's timeline looks like this, where it's like this happened and that happened, that happened, that happened. Mine is... Boom! This all happened. It's very hard for me to uh, to distinguish everything in my head. Um, but like, uh, what was good for Crota? Like, well, man, I guess that existed forever ago. That's a little cheating. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I don't find it. Fuck. Sorry. I just I literally had an itch and then I pushed my eyelash into my eye, and now that was fucking awful. Okay. Um. That being said, I don't really think, like, if we're talking about, like, day one raids, like, which of these are going to be relevant in day one raids, it's going to be, like, Edge Transit and Mountaintop. And that's it. Really? Uh, realistically? And maybe, like, Midnight Coup, I guess. I think, look, when I go into day one raids, um, my primaries are usually focused on, like, buffing my restoration or crowd control. So, like, Recluse probably not in there. Uh, Midnight Q probably not in there. Yeah, and may and maybe maybe I'll bring a ha a God Roll Hammerhead, maybe, it, uh, just in case there's like a trash ad encounter that has the occasional major that you need to burst. Um, but other than those two and maybe the Hammerhead, I don't think anything else is going to be good on day one. So. Lunas is better than Zolly's. Oh, I didn't think about that. Does it... Wait, does Lunas come with Incandescent? Because Incandescent's kind of pogged. I didn't... I wasn't even thinking about using Lunas in PvE. Oh, it does. Shit, brother. Oh! God damn, actually. Like a... Like a heel clip Incandescent Lunas instead of a Zolly's. I mean, I mean, shit, that's pretty good. And that way you can keep your restoration up and get cure. Like, and not only does it cure you, it cures your teammates as well. Uh, Like you need a solar mod for that, but that's fine. I usually run those anyways. In, in like ad clear encounters, it's very rare that like your arms, your arm mods are like, you know, you know what I mean? Like that's not, I don't think that's a, a, a big ask, so. Interesting, though. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so I'll probably grind out a Lunas then of that one. Uh, I also really... I guess we can go one by one. Um, and we can talk about this, uh, I suppose. I'm still pretty disappointed in Hung Jury. I think... I, I, I don't know why Hung Jury made the cut. They talk about their choices for all the weapons here. Um, it's Chris Proctor. 
Uh, in Destiny 2 Into the Light, we wanted to ship new versions of as many iconic weapons from all over Destiny's history as we could, uh, including a couple original Destiny throwbacks with updated art as well as rebuilt or brand new perks. Many of the original versions, <clears throat> excuse me, can no longer be acquired while others can only be obtained from end game activities. So I guess the idea is like, oh, you can only interact with Hung Shuri if you do Nightfalls. But like Onslaught looks like it'll be harder than like a normal Nightfall, so... I don't know. I don't like the Hungary. I'm I'm the only I would say like my most disappointed aspect of the entire into the light. The entire thing. It's like are we fucking serious about the Hungary, man? <laughs> Other than uh Hungary, what's another iconic Destiny 1 scout? Vision of Confluence. <laughs> the the most iconic Destiny 1 scout. Um treads treads upon stars. That was pretty sick. That was one of the very first strike specific weapons. Um, the uh, Iron Lord one. Don't remember the name. Conspiracy Dragon. That one, whatever the fuck that was called. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the Wrath of the Machine one. Burning Eye, yes, Burning Eye is a good one. Exactly. Toylock? Well, that's an exotic that doesn't really count. But look, man, I don't know. And, and also, why are we... Why is the... Why is, like, that slot reserved for Destiny 1 Scout Rifle? You know what I mean? <laughs> I can think of, like, a billion... What, okay, how about how about the Vestian Dynasty? Do you know what I mean? Uh, we don't get any sidearms in this. Why not, why not a sidearm? Vestian Dynasty. Why not... Uh, we don't get any auto rifles, you know, there's a hundred fucking crazy steel feather repeater um, the The one from season of the splicer is super super popular um, You have from destiny one. I'm trying to think of it. oh uh, conspiracy conspirator go no ghost primus from uh, Ghost primus sorry conspirator was the scout rifle actually um, The uh, from destiny one any auto rifle from destiny one did auto rifles exist in Destiny 1? There's Shadow Price. There was... All right, there were no auto rifles in Destiny 1. <laughs> Breach Light, like, I don't, Hung Jury's just such a meh, 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 meh. Yeah, uh, I forgot to pull the giveaway last night, so I'm going to do it tonight for sure. <laughs> the Sabres play at 7 Eastern. Uh, I've got nothing better to do, so uh, give away. I'm going to write this in all caps. You guys are going to see this. Give away. You fucking nerd neck. I'm going to draw some stars on it. I forgot to draw it. That's my bad. I even like promised someone in yesterday's stream that I was gonna do it and then Victoria came home with crumble So I was like fuck it crumble and then I was eating crumble and I forgot about the giveaway. That's 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 my bad. Actually, I was eating crumble. This is what happened I streamed for like two hours three hours yesterday however long I streamed and then Victoria I get a text from Victoria right as I end the stream. I've got crumble And I was like, okay crumble. We're going down to eat crumble and then while I'm eating crumble I was like, man, I'm hungry. I should eat dinner. So then I ate a salad for dinner because you can't eat a big dinner after eating crumbled because then, you know, I'm trying to watch my figure a little bit. You know what I mean? And so like now I'm eating my salad and then I get a text from Ratul who's like, hey, do you want to play zombies? I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I want to play zombies. So we got on and we played the Evil Dead map, well, custom Black Ops 3 zombies. And then we played one called Lasagna Party 2 that was like all memes. It was really weird. Um, and then I went to bed and I just forgot to do the giveaway. What's crumble? What's crumble? Crumble is a, uh, like a, they do fancy cookies. This is, they're not a sponsor, but I would gladly take a sponsorship crumble. Um, they're all over the United States. I don't want to, uh, I hope, please don't dox me. Um, and so they have like every week, they have six cookies and it rotates every week. So it's, I don't know why it's not loading. So like this week they have milk chocolate chip, strawberry pencil, pie, lemon crinkle, double fudge bounty. It's not a great week, actually. We only got two. We we got we got 
lemon crinkle and strawberry pretzel pie. But they rotate every every week. There's six new flavors. It's pretty cool. Um, so that's Crumble. Not a sponsor, but they should be. They're pretty good. They're also expensive. It's like three bucks a cookie. It's a lot. So it's like, yeah, you know. And they're so every cookie's like 800 calories. So like Victoria and I, we get we get a pack. Usually it's two to four that we usually get. We'll cut them into eights. And then we'll so we'll try an eighth of each of them, and then throughout the week or the next two weeks, we'll eat the cookies. So, so we're not we don't weigh a billion pounds. <laughs> Literally, food FOMO. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, we pulled these weapons from weapons from many sources, including raids, pinnacle weapons, black armory, and one epic meme. It's really hard for me to imagine Chris Proctor saying one epic meme. Then we carefully weighed the impact of rebuilding certain weapons against others before deciding on these to represent different eras of the game and a variety of weapon archetypes. Uh, the selection we ended up with is 12 iconic weapons remembered by with a smile by many players. Many of these will have random worlds for the first time, while others have updated perk pools. Our goal was to make them feel like they used to, and many retain their original stat packages, but others have been updated to achieve that feel in the current, uh, current weapon sandbox. But let us be clear. Only the Destiny 2 Into the Light versions of these weapons will have updated perk pools, even compared to the weapons that are currently obtainable in the game. Each weapon comes with a brand new origin trait, indom indom in indominability, indominability uh, many of which can roll, indominability, many of which can roll with a new right column trait, Desperate Measures. We've also made sure all of these brave arsenal weapons were updated to our current art quality bar and have a consistent visual theme across the whole set. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Scar, what are your thoughts on how they're going to make us excited for the final shape weapons when they give us these? Uh, I think they're going to be fucking busted. That's what I think. I think, look, Bungie, Bungie fucking knows that they cannot take the steam out of those weapons with free weapons, right? The, I, I would be shocked if we don't get some of the best, most overpowered, ridiculous fucking weapons we have ever seen with the final shape, which worries me a lot um, because we're kind of power creeped into oblivion right now. So I'm not really sure how you balance any of this shit. I have no idea. Uh, I'm quite worried about that going forward in the future of Destiny 2, to be completely honest. Um, but like, I also bet they're gonna look fucking awesome. Cause like, that's another important thing. Like with guns, it's really important how they feel and how good they are, but for a large part of the player base, it also matters how awesome they look, right? So. Time to install Destiny. Yeah, this stuff's looking pretty good. Which is worse, food FOMO or mountain top FOMO? Mountain top FOMO gets people excited about the game, so I'm happy. Once again, like, I think there's like, FOMO is a necessary part of looter shooters. I know it's become kind of this catch-all, like, there's a there's a couple terms that the Destiny community really latches onto and then just forgets like what they mean or context around them. FOMO, artificial difficulty, um, the fucking uh, don't over deliver. You know, like the Destiny community is like a bunch of senile parents on Facebook where they just like to regurgitate nothing words. You know what I mean? They just come up with a they come up with a topic and then they latch to it and it's all they can fucking talk about. And they just forget why they were mad or what it means, but they just know they don't like that concept. Um, FOMO is the CRT of Destiny, essentially, is, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and, uh, um, or I guess right now it's the DEI, right, of Destiny. It's like people, or the new engine thing, exactly, exactly. People, people don't know why they don't like it. They just know they're not supposed to like it and they don't think about it, right? But the, the, the truth is, is that for a functioning looter shooter and especially a live service one, FOMO is necessary. You need to have that drive to experience the game with your friends as it happens in order for the game to be successful. You need to have that drive to farm out new weapons over existing weapons, um, you know, and, and there needs to be a time incentive there too. So it's it's one of those things. I there's good ways and bad ways to do FOMO for sure, but FOMO by itself is not a is not a bad thing and is a a clear driver of almost everything we do in life, you know? You get a you get a you you go pursue a career you like cuz you have a fear of missing out on uh your future or like uh having a stable income or whatever it is. 
Um, you spend time with your friends because you're scared subconsciously or consciously. One day you won't be able to do that anymore. You go see your favorite concerts and band uh, or your favorite bands and concert. Uh, for same reason, you know what I mean? Like life is literally a series of FOMO decisions. This is how it works. Welcome to life. I actually think the limited edition weapons are a great FOMO. I completely agree. I completely agree. I hate FOMO, but why is Bungie opening day one raids for 48 hours? Uh, I hate FOMO, but why? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a really good point too. Yeah. I think, well, it's, it's one of those things. Like, I think there's different reasons to like or dislike the 48 hour things. Um, for instance, like if they insist on releasing raids on a Friday, I like the 48 hour things uh time frame from the perspective of not everyone can take friday off and i think everyone deserves a chance to experience a day one raid so uh and, m and many 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 like orders of magnitude more people have saturday off than friday so i think yeah if they're going to keep it a friday release 48 hours is a good thing for instance so um that's one of those things it's one of those things are you ready to use no time and conditional at the same time yes Midnight Q is coming back. Does it mean the other Leviathan weapons will join the loot pool at some point? Do not expect that. My dad's in the hospital really... <laughs> My dad is in the hospital really adding in the FOMO of hanging out with him. Like, you joke, but like... I mean, like, if, why do we visit people in the hospital? If your grandmother's in the hospital dying, why do you go visit her? Because you're scared she's gonna die while you're not there. It's like, I know it's obviously like a very hyperbolic example. But th that is quite literally, you have a fear of missing out on, on, you know, a family member's last moments. It's like, it's, it drives a lot of what we do in life. It, it's an incentive. <laughs> it's, it's, it's how humans live, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> That's just, it, it's what it is. So I'm just saying, con I, my, my point is, my point is, I'm being super silly. I'm being very silly, but my point is, is that when it comes to fear of missing out, FOMO, 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 uh, or just like your incentive to do something, context is very important. And there there are clear drivers behind every decision and motivators, whether that be a marketing thing or like a participation thing, whatever. Um, and I think it's important to just take all of that into consideration before screeching into the void, FOMO, you know what I mean? So basically, Destiny is real life for a lot of people. Think about how many friends you have on Destiny, okay? Now think about 20 years ago, how many parent, like how many friends your parents had in high school, 20 or 30 years ago, I guess. Um, you know what I mean? You know how much more connected we are to people because of video games and in, in the internet right now? We like literally have a much more human connection because, of, or some of us. I'm not. I don't want to speak to everyone or for everyone, but um, I, I, I. I have many more friends, know many more people, and am much more successful <laughs> than my, at least one of my parents because of a video game, you know, or in part due to a video game, I guess. Um, it's just like, yeah, this is for a lot of people, this is a very important aspect of life, right? FOMO plays into that. Scarrow, before we continue, have you ever seen Take Me to Snurch? No. Uh, I'm only at the hospital to harass my grandma about the spaghetti sauce recipe before she dies. You know what? That's FOMO. You you do not want to miss out on that spaghetti sauce recipe for the rest of your life. So you are grinding <laughs> the grandmother activity <laughs> before it gets sunset to get that spaghetti sauce recipe. You know what I mean? My ex-wife is woke FOMO buzzword over delivery. <laughs> Do you play Destiny with any of your relatives? I've played with one of my brothers before. Um, but no. I do like honestly, I have I have five siblings and I only talk. Well, I guess I talked to three of them. Uh and then they're all a lot younger than me. So it's like, and they're not really gamers. Grandma sauce is the new exotic. That's hot. You should look it up. I know you like music. I feel like this is gonna be really bad. I am the oldest, yeah. <laughs> but it's just my point. It, my point is, is FOMO is not necessarily a bad thing. And if you, if you find yourself caught in that 
either in that burnt out cycle where you're just rolling your eyes because of FOMO, then Destiny is clearly not the game for you. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you find yourself in a group of people on Twitter endlessly screeching into the void, FOMO! Then you probably just like should step back and reevaluate. Like, why are you even spending time doing that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so, um, so that's just kind of that's just kind of my two cents, I guess. Uh, here are the twelve weapons that we brought back for Barons. This wave frame grenade launcher has been a staple in PvP since it shipped with the potent combination of an ambitious assassin and chain reaction. It was only the second special weapon to include this strong ad clear perk, and the first one was a regular grenade launcher, so this one's better. Um, excuse me, this is from Vow the Disciple, so it normally requires the ownership of Witch Queen and an active raid group to get it, but that's not true. That's not true. In-game LFG and also the fact that you can just join checkpoints and farm it out in five weeks. Even fewer weeks than that, really. Um... But we want all players to experience this so strong it could be an exotic weapon. I, th I think they're on to me. I'm pretty sure they're on to me. They've heard my complaints and get a taste of in-game artillery. We took this opportunity to update its perk pool to include disruption break, demolitionist, and more. Third column, unrelenting. Pretty good because this makes up for no soul drinker. Stats for all, you guys know I'm not a big fan of stats for all or one for all, any of these weapons where you have to... Oh, on, on these weapons, I guess it would be all right. But normally, I'm not a big fan of those perks. Uh, Demolitionist, that's fun. Um, Ambitious Assassin, of course, come on. Surplus, Steady Hands, Disruption Break. Um, Wellspring, uh, Golden Tricorn, One for All, Bait and Switch. Which Bait and Switch on a special is kind of interesting. Uh, chain Reaction, I think most people are going to go for uh, Ambitious Assassin Chain Reaction, probably. Um, which is like the normal role. Uh, but what the fuck is Desperate Measures? What the fuck is desperate measures uh or unrelenting chain reaction what is this it's last stand from last stream oh why didn't they say that did they say that and i'm dumb oh oh yes okay yeah 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 yo junior what's up brother um, okay, so Desperate Measures, which is pretty much just better Golden Tricorn, or different Golden Tricorn. Corn. Golden Tricorn. Um, so Forbearance, I, look, honestly looking at this, and I could be sold, I guess, but I don't think this is better than the Raid version. I think Ambitious Assassin, Chain Reaction, Soul Drinker is an all-time combo, and, um, we'll have to see what the Chain Reaction nerf looks like, I suppose. But, what's the perk do again? It's something <laughs> it's something that's for sure i don't know off the top of my head i guess i can i can try to pull it up um. god there's there. no way i'm gonna find I've this done succession right it's better in lower and con end content i wait it's better in lower end content okay for the type of player that this loose says aim for it at it is better okay explain what what combo are you do you think it's better there like are you just saying because you don't necessarily need the healing from soul drinker so this origin trait probably benefits in like patrol level activity is that is that kind of what you're going for Yeah, and then, then you can just focus more on abilities and stuff. But, like, how... Then how... I don't really know any of the other perk combos on the other waveframes. Um, demo's quite insane. I don't know. Look, I've, I am not a huge demolitionist guy. It's fine. Uh, I just don't use it a lot. Um, but that's also because 90% of the time I play some bracers. So I don't need any help getting grenades so um so uh yeah if demo and the origin traits uh stack that's a good point as well i'm sure demo will like surely they're not gonna make it irrelevant so 
I mean, auto reloads with grenade throw. Yeah, it's not really that big of a deal, I guess. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm sure to some people, some play styles, different classes. If this is your thing, go for it. It's not, it's just not how I necessarily play the game. But um, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. When it comes to this sort of thing, like these quality of life perks, like damage perks, stuff like that, that ends up being pretty subjective right like uh or sorry that ends up being pretty objective like oh this is like statistically the best combination that you can get for this damage rotation or whatever when it comes to like these build perks i can't really speak to them it's just not it's just like i don't like one for all on most things it's just because i'm not sitting there and i'm not going one two three damage you know what i mean i'm just like i just shoot shit you know i just like it's just not how i enjoy playing the game personally but um doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, succession. This one I'm also not super excited about, but we'll see. Uh, with this combination of reconstruction and Vorpal weapon, the sniper rifle doesn't have to be manually reloaded. It hits very hard and sees a lot of usage in long range raid and nightfall encounters. It lured players into the DSC raid when Beyond the Light launched, and again when the weapon set was reprised more recently. As with Forbearance, while acquiring this from Deep Stone, a raid requires ownership of Beyond Light. This version is available to all players. Moving target, no traction, lead from gold. Uh, reconstruction firmly planted demolition is discord i mean come on um if you can get a double like lead from gold reconstruction that'll probably be pretty good but once again i, I like i'm also really biased towards lead from gold because you use it in a lot of solo and low man activities but if i think about this how many people like actively use lead from gold you know I've never seen anyone use the succession in a GM. <laughs> yeah, I usually actually, if I'm using a sniper, it's just Izzy's, honestly. Like 90, it's like Izzy's 90% of the time, supremacy 10% of the time. Um, I'm a, I'm a big supremacy fan. I, I, no, I don't even have a crafted, like I can craft succession. I just haven't. Uh, supremacy, if I'm going to use a legendary sniper for PVE, supremacy is pretty much what I'm going to use, so. so. Lead from Gold, speaking for the average PvE person, is useless. Yeah, I, like, I, Lead from Gold's, like, really a challenge perk, I feel like, at this point. I, I mean, not necessarily. You could definitely get utility out of it other ways, but um, I feel like 90% of the, the, the regular usage of Lead from Gold has to be from, like, solo Ron farmers, so. Discord Loki Juicer on this one. What's the what's the buff on Discord? Let me pull this up real quick. Destiny Foundry. I gotta always just have this shit open at uh, every point. Oh fuck! What comes with Discord? Does Prosecutor have Discord? Yes, it does. Uh, grants the uh, grants point seven five times ADS animation duration. Twenty five. Oh, I thought there was a damage burst on Discord. Why, why do you like this, dude? It's decreased ADS animation, 25% decreased accuracy cone, and 30 airborne effectiveness. That just doesn't feel like a PvP or a PvE perk to me. Oh, sorry, weapon, I didn't fucking finish reading the perk. Weapon kills while Discord is fully active, refill the magazine of primary and refund one ammo for special weapons. Well, that's a kill. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a kill. I would, like... I just feel like at, mostly at this time... Snipers are used for, like, boss damage. And mostly champions, I feel like, if you're going to use them. So I'm not sure... Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Not, not my pick. But once again, I'm not going to use Succession, so... Uh, I think if I was, I'd probably just go with the classic. Reconstruction Vorpal. Um... Fire can can succession get firing line right now? Yeah, it can. I didn't know that. That's twenty percent damage right there versus the fifteen from Vorpal. But firing line also has got to be one of unless they fixed it, one of the least consistent perks of all time. So. As someone who tried to make a Discord headstone locus loca locatus work, I forgot they named a gun that. Uh, the Discord isn't worth it on, on snipers. I'm sure some people are going to find ways to use it, so. Um, but yeah, not bad. 
Uh, Fallen Guillotine. The first legendary Vortex frame sword, Fallen Guillotine, uh, is descended from the Dark Drinker from the original Destiny. It immediately jumped to the top of the sword meta when it shipped and is so relevant now, making one of the most persistently used legendary weapons in Destiny 2. Now Fallen Guillotine is back with an updated perk pool and some spicy combos, including Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing Round, uh, and Chain Reaction is surrounded, and the longtime favorite Relentless Strikes and Whirlwind Blade. I feel like it's really weird to bring this back when Slammer just came, and it's pretty much the same thing. Um, you can't get Eager Edge Bay and Switch, so it does come with Eager Edge. So, <laughs> look, I, we all know at this point, v Vortex Frames, their damage, I think their overall DPS is fine. Their ammo economy kind of sucks. Yo, Garbage, what's up? Their ammo economy is pretty bad. It's usually 10 or 20 or less. Uh, I, I don't know how this is going to ship. That could change. I don't know. Uh, but anytime we did testing with Vortex Frames on Crota, you always ran out of ammo before the, the phase was over. Um, I th the important things... Uh, this does... Yeah, this one does have double damage, so Frenzy Bait and Switch is interesting. Um, Desperate Measures is also a damage perk, right? So... And Surrounded, actually. Like, Frenzy Surrounded, those have very similar like proc conditions um yeah so like maybe the double ah, now that i see all the you have so you have so many double damage options four full surrounded um i mean even fucking relentless would be really good uh frenzy like that could actually be really good i have no idea what duelist trance does um but surrounded whirlwind eager bait and, or not if i, I said eager because i i'm addicted a uh, bait and switch could a uh, desperate measures i think could be fine could be good i feel like we're gonna have to wait and see what the ammo economy looks like before we make any decisions on that uh, at least in my opinion i'm a lament lover for life that one also heals you um a lot of people are team bequest i think you're fucking crazy if you're team bequest but it's fine no, Bequest is fine. I'm just a little... I'm a certified Bequest hater. <laughs> um, sadly, Bequest has 20% more damage. Even with double perks? And Bequest ammo economy is really, really good. That is, like, the most attractive thing about Bequest is ease of use in ammo economy. Um, and so something... I could see double perks doing... Let me look. What is... I mean, Bequest literally only has Surrounded on it, though, right? People usually use Relentless. Relentless Surrounded. So Surrounded is 40% increased damage. I mean, this has Surrounded... No, this just does more damage. Bequest's baseline is 20% more damage. 10% shown on wipe screen and 10%... Mm. Oh, really? Is that a Crota thing only? That's kind of interesting. I didn't know that. I knew there was some weird shit going on with it, but I don't think I knew that. Into the Light comes out uh, April 9th, two weeks from yesterday. I also don't expect us to get another super, like, w it's pretty rare that we get, like, encounters that swords are really good in, and we just got one, so I kind of doubt we'll get another one. Uh, Recluse is coming back. Uh, this weapon shipped as a pinnacle crucible reward and instantly became mandatory in pve and ruling pvp with an iron fist now it's back with random rolls including the iconic master of arms perk kills with any weapons improve this weapon's damage for a short time it looks like it is 15 percent across the board we've tweaked this perk to be more balanced than the previous version but the recluse remains an extremely potent option in pve and pvp um that's interesting, Wabi. I didn't know that. Uh, Garbage, I think it's strange we will not have gone to any season of the Dawn reprisals. Yeah, I wonder if they're saving those for something. Maybe. They might be. Uh, so Recluse can get Feeding Frenzy. That's a great perk uh, option on this. Enlightened Action Subsistence is pretty good. Threat Detector is pretty good. Repulsor, Hipfire Grip, Dynamic Sway Reduction. Um, I mean, Repulsor is going to be really good on that too. Huh? Er, Repulsor gives you an Overshield. What comes with a repulsor brace? There's a glaive that does. Does a... 
Enigma. No, that was before these perks even came out. Fuck. God, I need to just know what perks are on things. Um. It's like a fucking void weapon. Any void weapon, please. Last Wish AR, thank you. Uh, which is called the Fight for it? No, the. I'm going insane. Ba -ba 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 -da. Too many perks. Too many guns. Playing the game. Does the Ross. Age old bomb, thank you. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Alright, repulsor brace. Kills against void debuff enemies, grants a 45 HP void overshield. Eh. That could be good. Um fourth column master hey look that that'll be really good that'll play really well if you're if you're on void obviously so like if you're a hunter or a titan i feel like void warlock doesn't get a lot of play uh fourth column master of arms uh 15 is pretty crazy target lock not bad frenzy um i always forget what the frenzy buff is is it 12 percent How do people keep all this shit straight, man? Uh, Frenzy comes on different guns. Frenzy. Frenzy is 15%, yes. But it also gives you reload speed and handling. So, like... I mean, Frenzy's just kind of... I don't know, man. Isn't the new Master uh, of Arms 20%? I believe it is 15 I believe it is 15. Uh, Wabi, you got the check on that one? Yeah, I think Frenzy's just better. The The only thing um, about... The only thing about Frenzy is it deactivates after 5 seconds. So you have to be in combat for 12 seconds. Being in combat is receiving or dealing damage every 5 seconds. So I feel like Frenzy might be a little... It'll, I think Frenzy will have more uptime, but it'll be more inconsistent. Like, you'll have Master of Arms because you will have just procced Master of Arms, and you will definitely know you have it. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Destabilizing rounds, I think, will be really powerful. I think at the end of the day, I mean, Surrounded is good too. Uh, I think at the end of the day, Recluse is going to be really good for Void builds. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. I, I, nothing here, nothing about Recluse is like, oh yeah, use this over a Sunshot. Use this over even the new Lunas or Zali's Bane. Use this over um, uh, Ikelos. You know what I mean? Like nothing here is like, oh yeah, this is going to be a crazy ad clear primary weapon. Um... Which I think is kind of a, a mistake because we have so many crazy ad clear primary weapons. I think a lot of people are also like maybe uh, gonna take in like a heal clip, kill clip, a summoner even like just to have a weird like dynamic in there. Um, and I feel like even that one has like more perk up time and more diversity than than this even. Uh, do you ever think these weapons would ever in the history of Destiny return? Um, I was kind of hoping most of them wouldn't. <laughs> So, I should have put Master of Arms in column three. Now that would have been good. Yeah, if you could stack Master of Arms with Target Lock or Frenzy, like that right there, I think would have been a really good change, personally. Was it Master of Arms 50% on release? Uh, when Master of Arms first came out, I think it was something stupid. It was like, it might have been like a, because it made all body shots count as crits, right? So, I actually think it ended up being like a hundred or 150 bodies and 50% for head buff. Something like that. It was just something really, really stupid. Um, It made all damage crit and was a buff though. Or made you shoot faster or something. There was an additional, I guess I can look. I still have recluse, I can look. Kills with any weapon improve this weapon's damage for a short time. That's literally what the description was. I think it did. It did make everything a crit, but I think you also got a damage bonus on top of that. 
but maybe I'm wrong. Um, it is kind of weird that they brought it back if they're just going to kill it, though. So, I don't really know what that's about. Mountaintop. This is where I start to get really excited. I think we've gotten, like, all the weapons we have just talked about. Um, all the weapons we have just talked about are probably the ones I'm the least excited for. From this point on, I'm pretty excited for most, if not all of them. So Mountaintop, another pinnacle PvP weapon that was the backbone of raid teams for more than a year. The Mountaintop had a massive damage output in PvE and PvP. We've tuned its micro missile perk into a new grenade launcher, uh, or turn, sorry. It's micro missile perk into a new breach grenade launcher intrinsic perk so that it retains that functionality but has two traits on top of that. We didn't want to return to the days of the Mountaintop PvP meta, so we opted to rebuild the micro missile. It retains its PvE strength, but with increase or with decreased self damage and massively increased physics per impulse hilarity ensues. Um, I think this is the best of both worlds. Honestly, like I was really scared of this thing in PvP. I'm glad that I, I'm still worried. Like even with it being nerfed in PvP, I'm still worried. Still worried. Um, so look, I think the the very I. Oh, Never mind. I was going to say the very obvious pick is Ambitious Assassin, but then also Lead from Gold is going to be such a good secondary perk to have on this thing. I just know I'm going to have two loadouts, and it's like, going into damage phase, I either have Ambitious Assassin or auto-loading. Like, I, I think the thing that Mountaintop is going to be really, really good for is is damage rotations. Um, I think it's going to be really fucking good at damage rotations. So you put on, if you get like an auto-loading holster, lead from gold roll, and then you just have two loadouts and you switch between them, going into damage, you're auto-loading, coming out of damage, you're lead from gold, so you can pick up ammo. Um, and with auto, I mean, auto-loading makes it like a great all-around fucking thing as well. Uh, I just, man, I think this thing, will, it will depend on kind of the timing of stuff, but I think yeah this could yeah exactly this could help you proc bait and switch really quickly um i think this has a lot of potential and if it's like a short damage phase where you don't have to do a lot or like a um a short lead up so something like uh it's like a, a something that you don't have to kill a lot of stuff and you can just go right to damage um like a tanix like that sort of thing like one where it's like okay there's a short damage window boom now you're now you're in damage phase if it's something like that and you can run double special without fucking yourself over i mean ha having this on top of like a uh, a rapid fusion or something like i can i'm just like my head's spinning thinking of all the crazy combinations or a shotgun uh i think you could do a lot of really fucking crazy stuff here um it's all going to come down to, like, there's so many combinations we haven't even considered. Uh, it also, like, is this, you know, if this is a damage rotation thing, is it really worth using it over an Izzy's? You know, that's, I think that's a question that's going to, I'm going to be asking myself a lot. Um, but I mean, Lead from Gold is such, such a good perk. Auto loading holster is going to be very strong. I think this is going to be really good at just, like, all around mid play as well um so we'll see is he's too slow can be consistent yeah maybe if you're bad but like <laughs> come on i think this is going to be very good uh rampage is crazy vorpal's a free 15 percent um one for all on this i would say absolutely not recombination i'm gonna have to look up the recombination that's uh that's the one where if you get x amount of kills Ba, ba, ba. Recombination uh, elemental kills grant one stack of recombination maximum ten stacks each stack uh, additively increases the damage of the next shot by ten percent. Additively increases the damage of the next shot by ten. So you can do t you can have one shot that does twice as much damage. That's fucking kind of crazy. Um, but I I mean come on frenzy like if you're if you're in a DPS phase. Frenzy's a free 15%. I would have to do the math of a full rotation, but I think like an auto-loading holster Frenzy. Well, Frenzy's really good because of that reload too. So you might not even need auto-loading in that case. Oh man, uh, this is one of these things. I think it just has too many good combos. We're gonna have to wait and see, I think. 
I think it's easily worth using over Izzy's. I think the ammo economy is probably going to be a lot better in this guy as well. Um, mountaintop, how many? Oh, does Dim not show? Dim doesn't show how many you can hold at base. I thought it did. In your backpack? Uh, overflow? I'm not, I've never really been a huge overflow fan, but maybe. I mean, that could... That could work really well. Vorpal's literally Frenzy, but you have it up always. But Frenzy also gives you handling and reload, which is pretty big. Like, and it's not a little bit of reload. It's a lot of reload. And so if you're in, like, a, if you don't want to use auto-loading auto and you want to use, like, a Lead from Gold Frenzy or something, that's pretty fucking crazy. If you want to do an Ambitious Assassin Frenzy and that's more of, like, a everyday type of role, like... That's pretty fucking crazy. Overflow swap to auto loading before damage. Yeah, that's a good one too. Um, that's good. What's the max you could overflow it? Does overflow have a max on it? Uh, is it what, 200%? Overfill amount max is at 100%. Yeah, 200% total. Um, so yeah, I mean, Overflow can only give you two shots. So, I don't know. We're, we're just going to have to wait and see. But I think this could be incredibly good. You could have lead for gold auto-loading by swapping. Yeah, I think that's like, that's what I'm leaning towards personally in my third column. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see. But I think that is what... I Because I... Yo, Marin, thank you so much. I just think this is going to be so strong in damage rotations for raid or gms or whatever you you want um i think this is gonna be really good and lead from gold i'm just such a sucker for that perk that's such a good perk um for very niche things so uh, yeah should be three with enhance uh, yeah i keep forgetting these things are gonna get enhanced perks i mean that also changes like fucking everything right half of these perks we've never seen enhanced actually i think we've seen all of these enhanced but I mean, like, in general, on this list, like, a lot of them we've never seen enhanced. There's a lot of questions there, you know? There's, uh, it's fucking hard, man. I just know that the mountaintop is going to have a lot of juicer rolls. And I think it'll be a, a really good in a lot of things. So. So. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you'll use Mount Top only for rotations, mini bosses, champs, general play. Uh, well, that's everything. You just listed everything. Uh, I think auto loading, auto loading holster and Vorpal would be the best. I don't know. I don't know about Vorpal. Like, Vorpal's also only boss damage. Frenzy is total damage. And so, if you're using this for as you describe, general play. I, th I honestly think I'm going to go for an auto-loading holster lead from gold frenzy combo. And maybe I'm crazy for that. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I've got to, I'm going to sit down and talk with all my, my raid team and, and chat about what, the, what they're thinking. Um, Vorpal's boss and mini boss. Yeah. But I mean, like there's a, there's a lot more things in the games than just bosses and mini bosses. Uh, this it, although it, it would probably one shot most none of those things, but and if you think about it, recombination ten times is equal to the bonus of seven frenzy shots. Um, but what if you miss that recombination shot? You know what I mean. You don't want to miss that shot. I'm the type of guy to miss that shot. Look at recombination enhanced. Destiny uh, recombination enhanced. Let me go to uh, Gunsmith. Destiny Gunsmith. I like a. Uh... What? What? There it is. I uh, I prefer this one for looking at enhanced perks. I like Foundry for like most things, but maybe I'm just more familiar. Let me look at um. What's the shotgun call? Or I guess I can just look at succession. Succession. 
enhanced recombination. Stacks increased by 12.5. Oh, so you reach it after eight instead of 10. Oh, that's pretty fucking good, man. And more damage? No. It looks like it does the same amount of damage. What if you miss an Izzy shot? I don't miss. Ah, oh, damn, that's pretty good, man. You guys might be selling me on the recombination roll. Yeah, you could like go into DPS with like recomb overflow. Bam, hot swap to like frenzy auto loading or something. Bam, bam, bam. I mean, that could be really good. That could be really good, man. Fuck, you guys might have just sold me on that. We'll see, we'll see. You might have definitely just sold me on that. I like the idea that you can't blow yourself up with it either. <laughs> I mean, I've never done that, but. Hammerhead, this one looks really exciting to me. The first legendary machine gun introduced in Destiny 2 is overdue for a return. Hammerhead is still considered one of the best of its kind and it's coming back with top tier perks in the iconic Black Armory style. The new perk combinations of Rampage plus Killing Tally and Rampage plus Desperate Measures are particularly spicy for PvE. So yeah, I'm really excited for Rampage Killing Tally. Um, I think this will be, I don't really use, I don't know really anyone who uses a lot of LMGs anymore. I definitely don't. Um, I think the if I'm going to use an LMG, it's like in a day one raid on encounters where there you just expect nothing but ads. So your bridges, your um, your uh, 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 securities from Deep Stone Crypt, your uh, first encounter of um, your uh, uh, acquisitions in Vow, like that sort of thing. And if you're just expecting to have constant non-stop ads with the occasional like major or ultra, I think this roll is gonna be really powerful because you'll have consistent uptime on this, plenty of ammo economy, and you'll be able to melt things. Um, other than that, I don't really use machine guns at all, personally. Uh, so I don't really see it like not like if I'm doing a GM, I'm using Apex or I'm using a uh, linear or a GL. You know what I mean? Like it, it just kind of depends on the, the boss of the week. Uh, but it's very rare for me to use a machine gun in any end game in any content, let alone end game content, with the exception of like specifically day one raids, specifically at heavy encounters. So, oh, Gambit. Uh, yeah, this would be really good for Gambit too. But as you guys know, I don't really I don't really play Gambit, so. Shameless Izzy Hammerhead invading loadout. Yeah, I mean, that'd be pretty gross, actually. <laughs> um, oh, I didn't notice it gets Onslaught. That's pretty huge as well. That's that. Is this the first? Is this the first machine gun with Onslaught? Yeah, this sort of thing right here is going to be fucking crazy in the game mode onslaught, um, for sure. I mean, that's the exact type of thing. Oh, the strand one has it. Okay. D defending onslaught. I mean, the 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 game mode onslaught is is pretty much what I just described. It's all endless ads with the occasional boss. This is the exact type of thing that's going to be really, really, really good for that. So that's why I'm excited for this. Um, so I wonder if Onslaught will have champions. They directly show that it'll have champions, yes. Yes. So I think like this is going to be great for that type of thing. Loki, it's Delirium 2.0. Yeah, exa literally exactly. That's a great way of saying that. Um, just super power creeped. You know, Delirium was at a time where like LMGs were a little better, I think. But... Um, I, I think this is going to be really fun. I think this is going to work to bring LMGs back. So I, I think this will be really fun. Plus Hammerhead is just like, it just, it's butter, right? Like it is one of the best feeling uh, LMGs we've ever gotten. It looks amazing. It feels amazing. Like I'm really excited for this one. So, 
Uh, Blast Furnace not the first, but so certainly the most beloved aggressive burst pulse rifle. Blast Furnace. I was about to, I was like, wait, that's not true. Because uh, I was thinking of um, the uh, the exotic one, but that's a five burst. I forgot about that. Uh, what is that shit called? Vigilant Swing. Uh, Blast Furnace now comes equipped with the Rasmussen ISA scope by default and rolls barrels instead of scopes in that first column. It was a powerhouse when it arrived, and it is once again with the advantage of some top-tier new perks, including the potent combination of Kinetic Tremors and Firefly PvE and Zen Moment Rapid Hit for a perfectly stable PvP roll. Um, I think... Wait! Didn't they show this thing with Desperado? That might have been... Oh, that was LC's rifle. Fuck, dude. If Blast Furnace had Desperado, I would never take it off. They didn't bring back my Einstein D. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, Zen Moment's going to be really good. I think this is... Look, I'm not... I don't know who uses Pulse Rifles in PvE. It ain't me, though. I... I Fuck, I don't even know if I've ever used a pulse rifle in PvE. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't even remember the last time, but I don't think there has been a time. Desperado's kind of mid. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? What the? What the frick? Um, Sad Moment's great. Keep Away is great. Like a keep away desperate measures or keep away kill clip might go really hard. I don't I don't know the new damage. I never use four burst rifles. You you mispronounce Despacito? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a pretty fucking good point. Um I don't know like what the cutoffs are gonna be, because I don't use four round burst pulse rifles. Who does? So uh I'm interested to see like what this like does kill clip make it a more consistent two burst. Does Desperate Measures make it a more consistent two burst? Like, what are we looking at here? Um, did you see the Destiny Team perk cor corrections? I did. Did they not update this? I would have assumed when they tweeted that out, they they updated this. But did they not? Uh... Okay, that has nothing to do with this, so. I went hard with the boss furnace. I'm glad that one's returning. I, this is a pretty nice one. Use a pulse rifle during Taken King's world's first raid with the sisters encounter? Bullshit, I did. What pulse did I use? What? How the fuck did you know that? Bro, there's no way I used a pulse. I'm looking at my pulses right now. You're making that up. You're making that up. Oh, taking king? No. Oh, I think you mean king's fall. Bullshit I did. King's fall. horrors least what i'm gonna put on disorienting blow and what dude old scarrow's a fucking idiot bro <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe that. What the fuck? How did you know that? Maybe it was a champ mod? Oh, it was probably anti-barrier. You're probably right. What the fuck? That was crazy. Yeah, how the fuck? Morning. <laughs> Morning Star says I watch it all the time. Oh my god, there's no way. God damn.
Anyways, Blast Furnace. I think this one will be really fun, but um, I also just noticed double damage perks. Headseeker Kill Clip. Headseeker Desperate Measures. Like, Kinetic Tremors Kill Clip. What are they do? Why? What are they doing? <laughs> oh, man. That was pretty good. That was pretty good, Morning Star. That was pretty good. Um, So... Yeah, well, I'll have to see. I don't know what any of the damage cutoffs for this are, but I'm very excited. I loved this thing. This is one of the most iconic uh, moments in the history of the channel. One of my first, like, viral moments was me getting the Blast Furnace with the shader, but it was the role that I wanted as well. So I think I had to dismantle it. <laughs> is Connect Tremors an actually useful perk? It depends who you speak to. I have never used it, but Edge Transit. Holy shit. This heavy grenade launcher is a longtime fan favorite and the most often requested weapon to reprise on this list by far. Okay, not really, but the ridiculous drop rate in early Forsaken was such a persistent meme that we couldn't resist including it and tur turning it into one of the strongest grenade launchers in the entire game. With the greatest hits of grenade launcher damage perks and one particularly spicy option of cascade point in the third column. With chain reaction getting buffed on dr drum grenade launchers in final shape, the chain react, I don't fucking care about that, no. Most who's using a grenade launcher to add clear? No one does that. Cascade point and bait and switches are particularly synergistic for single target damage. This weapon is also why we pulled the heavy grenade launcher buff from the final shape into the 735 update. So the thing that's gonna be crazy here. The thing that's gonna be very crazy here is getting uh your envious assassin getting a billion a, a million things in your in your it'll probably go up to what like 13 or 14 now depending on what how big the mag is 13 14 16 let's say 13 to 16 depending um things in your uh in your mag hot swapping to cascade point and bait and switch you're done you're done 18, 21, or 24, depending on your perks or mags. <laughs> I doubt that'll work. I mean, it, uh, you're just a hater, bro. But I, uh, I'm i gonna get my two. Doesn't get envious anymore. No, it, it, no, we checked this. It doesn't get ambitious. It's so working. Right? Brrr. Oh, fuck. I got to pull up this goddamn tweet. Yeah, Edge Transit will roll with auto-loading holster instead of ambitious assassin. I did the same shit in, in, in Discord. I literally did the same shit. I thought... When they said ambitious assassin, they meant envious. Envious still works. We're enviousing the shit out of Cascade Point in Bait and Switch. And it's gonna go. It's gonna be fucking crazy. You're gonna unload those 24 grenade launchers faster than your mother. And it's gonna be crazy. And your mom's gonna go like, whoa, how'd you unload that so fast? And you're gonna say, I use tech, I learned on Scare 9's channel, you should go subscribe. And then she's gonna be like, oh, Scare 9, I'll check him out. And then then she'll check me out and then we'll fall in love and then i'll be your new stepdad and it'll be great uh anyway so this shit is uh probably the most busted shit this or mountaintop most busted shit they're they're uh <laughs> oh fuck it all so those are those are gonna be great uh luna's howl of all the types of weapons we wanted to include selecting a limited number of hand cannons was by far the hardest we probably could have filled the entire list with often required hand cannons we have not forgotten them oh we have not forgotten them that son of a bitch 
but there are a couple that stand out for both nostalgia and dominance which one of which is luna's howl originally this was a precision frame 180 rpm hand cannon and the magnificent howl perk would let you two tap on follow-up kills in pvp driving massive amount of players to engage with the competitive pvp playlist when it launches a pinnacle weapon the blisteringly fast TTK was a bit over the top for the amount of effort the weapon required, so we reduced its rate of fire and redesigned the perk to have a high reward for more effort than the original. <sighs> for this iteration, we kept it as a precision frame, 140 RPM hand cannon, and redesigned the Magnificent Howl perk. The number of precision final blows before reloading affects the total rounds granted with increased range and damage. Precision final blows with Magnificent Howl uh, active extend the effect for additional rounds. This will allow for those two taps, but with more effort required, and the precision frame will make it very easy to control. I think, the look at Labs DMs. All I got was a message that said, retweet to scare, scare 09. <sighs> yeah, I'll do Star Splash tonight. I have it ran down. See? Giveaway, you fucking nerd neck. That's because I forgot yesterday. So I wrote myself a little love note. God damn it. The correction tweet, they they put it up on Bungie Helper uh, Destiny 2 team actually, but they've made the changes to this article. So, it's fine. If you if you're just not reading this or you this use this ever as a reference, they've they've made it. Um Okay, so I think this one's going to be really fucking good. Uh I think Magnificent Howl is going to, you know, it's going to be a little difficult, but I think it'll be fine. Um it's probably like get two kills without reloading bam bam and then you know then you have a two shot i don't think that's that bad slide shot also reloads your fucking perk or your hand cannon so if these two work together like if slide shot what well, slide shot reloads right it does i'm not crazy yeah so if you if you're sliding around you're like Bada, food bada, food bada. and then you can get like three or four fucking kills and you go, and then you just have two two shot two two taps ready to go bam 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 also when you get kills with those bullets then you get more so now you have three so it's bam 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 and then you fucking reload and you have more fucking bullets ready to go i think this shit's gonna be very very good i think this thing's gonna be very good incredibly good in fact um also it was pointed out to me by my friend hoon or wabi or both or lab one of my friends that uh this thing can also roll with incandescent um and heal clip incandescent or subsistence incandescent uh, subsistence on hand cannons kind of like eh, maybe not but you know what i you know, heal clip incandescent is probably what i would go with making it essentially a better zolly's bane it's also the easiest fucking gun to use of all time because it, it when you shoot it, it's like Doo like it doesn't fucking move at all um i think this is gonna be a very powerful solar option for warlocks not looking to use sunshot but looking to keep up restoration with ember of empyrean i think this will be very 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 good yo saw thank you for the super chat my friend new meta will be mountaintop recluse heavy gl again i don't know about recluse but it's it's funny how the the turns have tabled for sure thank you so much for the super chat my friend lucky pants mag howl um i don't i don't think that'll be better than malfeasance so you think this gun sucks all right we're gonna fight bro anarchy getting buff anarchy already got a buff anarchy is almost to where it was pre-nerf everything else is just more powerful i do think anarchy is going to be very very good i uh, i i think uh that's one thing i really want to try and onslaught as well um I just think you have so much ammo. I think it'll be really good. They gave it way more reserves. It'll be good. And it got a damage buff not so long ago. So. Hell yeah. Uh, pretty excited for this. It didn't make sen uh, sense to ship Not Forgotten in this release, but we're on the look. We're on the lookout to bring it back too. Thank you. 
My baby. My baby. Midnight Coup. This hand cannon dominated PvP and PvE in year one, mostly because raid weapons were the only ones with two trait columns back then. Plus, it had amazing stats. These have fallen a little bit uh, behind a little bit, so we've updated them at the same time, and we've given it a brand new perk pool. It still includes, includes the original combo of Outlaw Rampage. No one's going to fucking use that anymore. But keep an eye out for Firefly Kinetic Trevor, Tremor in PvE and moving target in moment for PvP. I don't think anyone's going to use this thing in PvP. I could be wrong. It does have, like, unbelievable aim assist. Um, so maybe I'm totally wrong on that, but this has always seemed like a, oh, I just noticed that as opening shot, moving target. <laughs> Explosive pay, like, okay, maybe some people are going to use this in PvP. Um, uh, fuck off, Fatebringer, Midnight Q, my goat. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the number one thing this thing does. Uh, Explosive Payload, Rampage, um, maybe Kinetic Tremors once again, like, I, I don't really use it. Uh, some people are going to love one for all desperate measures. We're still going to have to wait and see everything, uh, that desperate measures can do. Um, but like this thing can come with some pretty juiced rolls. So we'll, we'll just have to see. I'm not as excited for this one, but, um, or just kind of blasphemy. I'm sorry, but we'll see. It does feel really good. I, I will have to give it that. And if I, if I'm still a forbearance nerd, midnight Q forbearance just makes sense. But I think like, I think I might just be a double special guy now. I think I might be a mountaintop top forbearance. You have mountaintop, top, you have your single target damage, you have your forbearance, you have your infinite fucking annihilation of adds damage. M might I run out of ammo? Maybe, but if I run out of ammo, I'll just yell at my teammates for not getting enough kills. You know what I mean? So, I think, uh, I think I'm a double special guy now. I don't think I'm going to ever use a primary again. So, yeah, and I, I do think this thing's going to be really good. It just doesn't have the best, um, it doesn't really have the best PvP perks. But if it feels great, who cares? You know what I mean? I mean, it already has in incredible base stats. So, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Hung Jury! Boo! Hung Jury was at one time one of the most requested weapons to bring forward from the original Destiny. And we did in Destiny 2 Season of the Splicer. And again, and again. And again. Uh, but it's only right to include it here again, given its legacy. We wind wound, enlightened action, uh, kinetic tremors, rapid hit, shoot to loot, no distractions, loose change. I still have no idea what the fuck loose change does. One for all, cascade point, uh, box breathing, firefly, precision instrument. I mean, this is a, uh, this is a, what are we thinking? Rapid hit, precision instrument type of, type of deal. I don't, no one's going to farm this shit. I don't even, I don't even know why we're talking about it. <laughs> no nah, opening shot explosive payload the best in-game pvp perks for sure for sure did that is that way can it get those or are those in different perks or in slots yeah i mean fuck it dude yeah you don't really need opening shot on it it's already got stupid aim assist but fuck it oh zen moment actually actually zen moment explosive payload might be pretty good it might be pretty good so LC's a rifle. I'm, as a person who still to this day crutches no time to explain because I love that gun. I'm very excited for this and I hope it feels as good. Notice the stranger's rifle when it originally shipped. This pulse rifle is familiar to any guardian who played through the original Destiny campaign and it's the oldest weapon on this list. Now it returns as a void weapon with top tier PVE and PVP perks. Feeding Frenzy, Desperado, Zen Moment Desperado, keep away desperado um like like bruh you know what i'm like just fucking just fucking bruh they didn't bring back kvostov kvostov is coming with final shape we already know that um i might be a keep away desperado gamer might be a zen moment desperado gamer I think this thing is going to be fucked in a very good way. And I'm very excited for it. I mean, come on. Come on. You know what I mean? I'll have to wait and see. Um, and that's all of them. Half of these, this is, I don't like how they just threw this in. So this is the one point that I'm not a big fan of. 
Uh, but I want to I want to talk about this. So, and that's all of them. Half of these will be available starting April 9th, including the Recluse, Hung Jury, Succession, Edge Transit, LC's Rifle, and Guillotine. So I will be initially, uh, immediately farming for a God Roll, LC's, and Edge Transit. Um, the other stuff, I'll, I'll farm if I'm bored or whatever, but I'm not really that excited for them. The remainder will unlock one at a time each week through the week of May 21st. So uh, we'll get six of them right away. And then for the next six weeks, we get one a week. Um, the Brave Arsenal weapons will continue to drop from Onslaught after the final shape, but the limited edition variants won't be available uh, after June 3rd. So go get them while you have, so while you can. Uh, so, oh, so what Hoon says here, I don't like this, but what Hoon, I had a, I had a couple people message me uh, about this because I, um, well, you can get one of the GLs. You can get the Edge Transit immediately. But I I was talking a little bit of shit about this on Twitter, and uh, a fellow Destiny 2 player that I respect a lot messaged me, um, and they said they actually brought up a really good point that like I was I let me pull up my tweet and then I'll I'll say what they said because I want you to have context, um, and just like I I just want to hear your thoughts on it. So my my tweet was it was quoting this I said lame. And then I said, in quotes, here's some limited time items to farm, but they're also time gated. Big lame, bad lame, sad lame. That's like a classic Scarrowism. Trying to force player retention is cringe and looks awful. If you give a reason to play, and they have, people will. Just let us play the damn game, farm the shiny weapons, and get hooked before Final Shape comes out. Time gating nonsense just reminds everyone of what, uh, of, uh, sorry, I saw, I saw that I was blocked by someone. Um, fair enough. Uh, just let us play the damn game. Farm the shiny weapons. Get hooked before Final Shape comes out. Time gating nonsense just reminds everyone of why we're mad at the game. And I, I stand by a lot of that sentiment. Now, it was, it was posited to me that they could also be doing this to make sure that players don't burn themselves out before the Final Shape. Uh, and I think that's like an interesting perspective and, and an interesting way to look at it. Like Bungie wants to, I look. I think Bungie's goal with this. There's a reason this is free. It's because Destiny is the best fucking feeling game in the world. We all know this. There's very few games that feel good, as good as Destiny, right? If they get people back to play this, it will get them excited to be in Destiny again and get them excited for Final Shape. Thus driving up, and, and the more people are playing, the more people are feeling it, the more they tell their friends. This is a marketing thing. It makes a lot of sense from a psychological standpoint. And that's why they're like, hey, you only for these eight weeks, these are the only times you can get these super special ornaments that look cool. They're trying to get people into the game now to get them hyped for the final shape. And so I think personally, reintroducing bullshit like time gating like this just is going to remind people why they get mad at Bungie all the time. So I think this is this is going to make people think same shit, different day. Um, I I I think it's an interesting perspective that maybe uh they they just don't want people to burn themselves out or whatever. I just don't. It's not like Bungie's job to play the role of my mom to do that. You know what I mean? Um, I mean they probably do a better job than my actual mom. Am I right? But uh. You know, like, it's, I don't know. I think it's an interesting perspective and maybe that's what they were going for. But I think, and because it doesn't make sense, right? Like them driving player retention right now does not make any sense because they, they're not going to care how many people play the game right now. They care about how many people come for the final shape. But I think the reality is, is the more people that play right now, people are going to get hooked, remind themselves why they love Destiny and then they're going to play more final shape. And so I, I don't know this, 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 Time gating stuff doesn't help anything. I, I think it's only gonna make people mad. I hope they walk this back. It's real dumb. Real dumb. So uh kind of off topic about I noticed there's a mission to complete this season looking at the trials. Yes, there's still there's still also a final mission for this season. There that is correct. We still have a whole marketing push for final shape, and I would be very surprised if we don't get some sort of community puzzle or something. Like it's very copium. But I feel like the, the game needs it now more than ever. So this also is what's allowing this loot to be anywhere near okay. Yeah, totally, totally agree. I am interested in seeing what you were, what you, what you're talking about, Hoon. 
Um, like when I get in the game, I get in the swing, swing of things. I want to binge the game. If I can't binge it and it's only like five hours of gameplay, it does not like make me want to play in a week. That's exactly my point. No one is ever like, all right, I, I feel great. I'll come back next week. You know what I mean? Destiny players, there's no in between. Destiny players are either playing this shit 20 hours a day or they're really angry because there's only a one hour quest every Tuesday. There's no one in between. No one exists in that in between space. They are a myth. They're a meme. They don't exist. Let us just farm, man. Let us be excited. Let us have content. Let us... I, I'm, I'm glad they're at least giving us six... Six weapons is a lot. It's really unfortunate that, like, three of the weapon, Three of the four weapons I'm not excited for are included in the original six. I think that kind of sucks. It is what it is. Um, I'm also not excited to only have two weeks to farm a shiny god roll of whatever that unfortunate gun is. <laughs> Excuse me. That That's the fine, very final one that comes out. But... Um, I did buy the the Cade Funko, yes. So, uh, dude, it's like the same thing with the weekly story missions. Do play, players enjoy them being time gated weekly as opposed to binging the entire story? I enjoy binging the story. I enjoy sometimes delayed. I the story beats themselves. I don't mind being delayed. The mission being go run this lost sector go run this lost sector. I don't like that being delayed. But when if there's a story beat in it, and if there are seasons where it feels like the world is evolving and moving from week to week, it's very few seasons. It is like, uh, I think like Season of the Dawn is a great example of this. It was like, okay, we're actually doing something. The world's evolving. Oh, look, now we can go into the, the infinite force and we can do something. We get an actual mission. It feels great. There's a new cutscene. Things are happening. And then it was like, okay, now we farm for another week. And it's like, okay, now this feels good. Now things are actually changing. But recently, over the last two years, it is all too often that it defaults to run this law sector, talk to this person, watch this cutscene. And it doesn't feel like anything's changing. It just it, it just feels like chores. Like I really need impactful, you know, it, it feels like the world is still moving. So I, I don't know how they do that. But, um they uh th i think that's what they need to work on uh uh hoon sent me this destiny 2 players chewing through content given the opportunity oh turbo tax me or fucking ass. i wrote the mark one second I think I played into the deep wherever the water one was, season of the deep, and every week is the same seasonal missional activity thing they had me do. Yeah, that's a great example of like, and there was a story that didn't really matter. So I think that's a great example of one that didn't work as well. I think season of the witch worked a lot better personally. Like I, I don't think it was anywhere near perfect, but you know, if through the Embaru engine and stuff, like I, I actually felt like we were at least getting somewhere and doing stuff. Um, I feel like out of everything this year season of the wish has hit that formula or sorry season of the witch the uh, the era season has hit harder by far the hardest the other three just from a from a progression standpoint didn't feel very good all right so uh hoon says this is a representation of destiny two players chewing through content given the opportunity not allowed on the beaches or in the parks outside certain hours so how is it that these two are roaming their neighborhood, frightening the locals, and the council isn't stopping it? Now, yesterday morning, I came out into the front yard and the dogs were across the road. And as soon as they saw me, they came bounding over. <laughs> and I just made it into the front door in time. Ray Graham is a friend. I was I was really wondering where that was going. <laughs> so, oh uh, man. So, I really hope they walk this back. I don't know if they're able to walk this back at this point. I'm very. I think. Look. I think at the end of the day, Into the Light is going to be for especially for a two month content drop that they barely had any time to work on. Uh, and is completely free and unexpected and should not have existed in the first place. I think this is looking unbelievably awesome. I'm very excited for Onslaught. Once again, is it the best version of that activity? It doesn't look like it. I'll have to get my hands on it. But I think it's a great starting point, something that they'll be able to build off of in the future. And it's something I'm really excited for. It's something a lot different than what we've done in Destiny before. Um, 
most of these 12 weapons are incredibly exciting. I'm really excited uh, to get my hands on them. I love the idea. I love the idea of the, the limited time ornament and the shiny weapon gimmick. I think that's fucking incredible. And I hope they bring that into further aspects of the entire game. I love the idea of kind of the, uh, the super black shader and, and us having fun with shacks. I think that's really cool. I'm really excited to see the three new crucible maps on Tuesday. Um, and for the, for the, the exotic mission, that's probably whisper. We'll see. Um, I'm really excited for all of this. I'm very, very excited for all of this. I think it's going to be awesome. It's just small things like this where it's like, man, only Bungie, only Bungie would do something like this. Um, and it's fine. It doesn't destroy the event. It's just like a little frustration. And it's like, man, we're always so close. Why does this always happen? Can we, can we just not, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, I'm really excited to farm for this. I'm, 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 I'm going to enjoy the shit out of a lot of this for sure. Um, but we'll see. Imagine this is a mission from destiny one. Destiny one didn't really have any exotic missions. I mean, it, I guess it, no time was kind of one and whisper sort of, but like that's nowhere. Or, uh, I guess there's black spindle at the time, but those weren't, those weren't the same. In fact, it's only one weapon. Well, you do get six initially. So it's six and then one, 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 one. But um, it does seem very strategic, the ones that they held back, which I don't like. I just hope that it's not like fucking Luna's. So that's the very final one. Or the, if the mountaintop, we only have two weeks to farm mountaintop, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> what about the exotic sword missions? Are there missions for that? I do not recall the exotic sword missions. I mean, I remember, like, f sitting for 10 hours in the Dreadnought farming shit, if that's what you mean. But I don't remember any, like, mission for it. But Yeah, I just don't know. I'm just... I don't know if it is player retention. The more I think about it, the more it's just, like, this... It doesn't make sense. Like, right now is not the time to farm player retention. I just don't... I don't buy that. Um, But I don't... If it's not that and it's not the burnout thing, I don't know what it could be. It just, it just seems like a classic Bungie thing. I think it's less about player retention necessarily, I guess. And it's more about like uh, one of the, either a game director or something, like someone is like, oh, we have to have something for the players to do every week. How do we do that? And I'm like, oh, let's split up the guns. But like, you don't have to have things for the players to do every week. I think this is something that episodes are going to teach us and our teach Bungie. And I think it's something that they need to start evaluating. It's good to have consistent content drops, but it's, it's a lot better to have more slightly spaced out content drops that are have substance than like nothing burgers every week right um the the collection of these is is worth more than the sum of these is more than the individual parts right so this very much feels like a but we need i i don't i truly like i just don't and maybe this is just because i'm disconnected or whatever but i just can't see anyone going oh we need the player retention do that. I think it truly just feels like a thing that's like, look, our players like to have something every week. Just space it out. Like, it, it feels much less malicious, I guess, or, or however you want to phrase that. But maybe that's copium. I have no fucking idea. There should be a time just to have some fun before the final shape. Let Destiny players play how they want. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. Totally agree. The issue is I might just end up hopping off for the first week, see things and waiting until the ones I really want to release. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be it for most people. Like, I I don't know. If it, it just feels like a... It's just a bad move. They've walked back recently, moves that the community didn't like. I don't know if they're if that's on the table for this or not. I, I really hope it is, but um, we'll see. But yeah, so I think that is going to be it for today. Um... I'm, I'm a, I kind of wanted to do some solo, um, solo flawless practice and attempts or whatever, but I'm, I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty worn out. I had a really long day. So I think, uh, I'm off Friday. So I think what I'm going to do is just call it a little early here, uh, get shit done. And then on Friday, I think we'll just have a good long stream where I, I do some stuff, um, and, and this weekend. And I, I want to, if I'm going to hit this hard, I really got to hit it hard before into the light comes out. So um i, I kind of plan on it so all right everyone well love your faces thank you so much for hanging out i'm i'm genuinely excited for a lot of this stuff 
Um, and I, I can't wait to play it. So, and next week we got we got a pretty crazy reveal stream coming too. So, yeah. All right, everyone. Have a fantastic night. Love your faces. I'll see you very soon. Peace out. Have a good one.